So Rose, thank you for joining me for this interview today. I'm really pleased to have you here. And I'd like to start by asking you about your life as an artist. And, you know, uh, or, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself, even if you don't want to concentrate on the art. Just tell me about who you are or where you come from. Um, I'm 28 years old this year. Um, I am from Santa Clara Pueblo. Um, I grew up there at Santa Clara Pueblo, um, and I was educated at um, the University of New Mexico, the Institute of American Indian Arts, um, was where I got my bachelor's degree, fine arts, and then on to Rhode Island School of Design, where I got my um, master's degree in ceramics. Um, so I consider myself a sculptor who basically works mainly in clay and mixed media. Um, so I. Um, I'm a recent graduate, MFA graduate, so I'm living um, at, you know, at Santa Clara and working in my studio and, you know, reconnecting with my community, um, um, not just the Santa Fe art community, but also, um, you know, my traditional community and my contemporary community, my peer community, all this wonderful cultural um, sort of pools that I'm a part of. And part of that is working with young people, I think, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited now to start, start working with young people. Um, I feel like much of the university setting and schooling in general is very, it sort of separates different age groups a lot of the time. And I feel like um, some of the knowledge, you know, that, that um, the experience of the educational institution um, can really help all ages, you know, from like, young kids to you know high schoolers and stuff and just introducing the power of creativity you know in every situation i think is glorious and i'm also um on the board of directors of a nonprofit organization called flowering tree permaculture institute so i'm um, also running classes at my residence on um, cultural um, preservation and sustainability um, so there's a lot of conversation happening there and i think that art um, is definitely connected to sustainability and creative thinking can produce amazing results in every walk of life. So it's been really fun to bring them all together. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Well, it's been great to have you do a little bit of uh, other stuff uh, across the world. I was glad that you could participate or answer this invitation we had from the city of Ichon, South Korea to attend their big ceramics festival and to probably, I hope, get some inspiration there as well as giving a little of, your, little of yourself <clears throat> to the community that was participating in the festival. And it would be um, a lot of fun, I think, for our audience to know what that experience was like and uh, what you're thinking about as you reflect back on it now that it, you've been back for, what, a, six weeks or eight weeks, something like that? Yeah. Wow. Um. I would say that um, the experience really changed my life. <laughs> um, and I feel like I, even though I had, I have stud I had studied in Japan ceramics specifically, so I had been to, to um, I guess the region. And um, so I sort of understood a little bit of the history of the ceramics in the area, um, but I was, I sort of released my expectations to sort of be open to what I could sort of take in from the experience. And um, I was totally humbled and amazed and changed from it, really. Um, coming from an incredible legacy of ceramics as a Pueblo person and being coming from a family that, you know, um, has worked in ceramics for. <laughs> hundreds of years and that being a lifestyle. It's not a choice, it's a lifestyle. That seeing another community and culture that has the same sort of um, legacy um, and also um, the value of that was very interesting to see, especially coming from, um, I think, America, wherein the, the, the conversation of art versus craft is very still still fresh and frustrating. <laughs> and ceramics often is sort of um, 
stashed to the side of the art world as a craft or as something that is, um, you know, not a legitimate art form. Um, also, you know, indigenous art and traditional native um, ceramics or clay making is often sort of um, boxed into yeah. a separate conversation in a separate uh, booth, so to speak. So um, seeing how South Korea responded to um, art, to ceramics, and not just traditional ceramics, but ceramics as a genre and ceramics as an expression, as a creative expression, was really eye-opening. Um, it, it, I, th I feel like it was given a certain amount of energy that other places don't necessarily give to ceramics unless it fits within another sort of uh, walk of life. Um, so that was really, really, really cool for me to see and that there is, I think, something that I have defended in my own work because as a sculptor who uses clay, you know, the conversation is why are you using clay? You know, when you could use wood or you could use metal, or you could use glass or you could use whatever you come across really. And that clay is to me a very important material um, because of its connection to culture and community. Yes. And its expression has a sense of immediacy and honesty, I feel, um, because of the process. So um, seeing how they approached ceramics, and not just traditional ceramics, but I mean, the festival at Ichon, there, was just blew my mind. It really did, and and um, I think um, one of the main things that really caught my eye was the amount of children that were there and participating, because I think there's this like, it's fragile, don't touch it, attitude that a lot of um, the the ceramics communities or people any anybody who sort of interacts with ceramics, fired ceramics. Um, has this, this sort of don't engage because it's, it's breakable, you know? And these kids were running around holding like very expensive pots and tea bowls and stuff. And, and you know, the parents would look and see the kid, like pick it up, play with it, and put it back. And there was a sense of um, the trust that the kids wouldn't break it. And that was, mm -hmm. that, it, that in a sense, it became like the ceramics was more of a family member or a process rather than an object that was separate than life. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was um, one of the main differences I saw and I think that would be eye-opening for anyone from America or from cultures that consider ceramics as a separate fragile object that doesn't necessarily have a life and a death and that understanding that relationship. Even watching Mr. Han open his kiln and breaking pieces that were not um, too par, I suppose, to, you know, for his, for his process, creative process, and seeing that, like, the release of preciousness, in a sense, also, was, there was a lot, there was so, I could go on and on, really. <laughs> well, it sounds really interesting, and it's uh, interesting to think about the contrast, because I think the price levels for ceramics are higher there, right? Yeah. And yet you're saying that they don't worry so much about a little kid who's picking it up. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. It's really interesting because I feel like um, it has, an, like when something's bigger or can, has given more energy, then it has more opportunity to change and to flow, right? So it can be super, super precious and it can be, um, you know, um, priceless or throw, you know, like from priceless to, to disposable, really. Yes. And, it, and it, because it has that immensity, um, I feel like the, the options to approach it or the opportunity to approach it in so many ways and have people actually give it the space because they've opened that space within themselves to understand the whole sort of spectrum of its potential. Mm -hmm. and, and so, when, you know, the possibility of approaching people. And when I was building something, when I was making something there for them, it wasn't like, oh, what's that? It was like, you know, these really traditional potters were watching me work on my sculptural piece. And they were, because they had this sort of spectrum, they were like, wow. Rather than judging it as 
not okay. Yes. And I think that was the, one of the most amazing things. So tell me about the building of that piece. Was that within the festival area that you were building it so people were watching? Or? Yeah, um, we were underneath a tent in the festival area, which this, this ceramics festival is huge. It's, it was like ceramics Disneyland. It was, I'd never <laughs> seen anything like it. And um, we had, I had a table under this tent with these, they call them master hands, um, artists master potter sculptors um, and they were there working as these respectable people um, mostly older men um, and uh, so Heidi Lowen and I had our separate little booths that we were working in um, and I had made friends by that time with uh, the the um, inter or the what are interpreter they? or no the um, one of the, the students at the at the place the residents oh okay at the place mm -hmm. um, so we met like the up and coming sort of contemporary artists there in ceramics and oh. we hit it off yes. <laughs> so to speak uh -huh. and so we were all hanging out there and they brought us clay and um, I started building a piece and um, the table immediately got surrounded by little kids. And when I was talking about the kids, you know, and they're like reaching out and touching my thing and knocking the table. And it was, you know, it was like tall and sort of fragile. And they had no like fear of interacting with me while I was making this piece. And, um, you know, it felt like in, in another situation, there would be like a bar and there would be people standing there, like protecting yes. the thing from, from the kids. Mm -hmm. And um, at one point, this lady was standing there with a parrot on her shoulder and it kept squawking and some little girl had this puppy and she laid it right on the table next to where I was working and so I could work and pet the puppy who was sleeping and it was like, it was a great experience. It was just glorious. I had so much fun and it was, you know, everybody was there and like really interested and, um, you know, excited and the energy was, it, it I love it when the preciousness like disappears and it becomes more of an interaction and a relationship rather than objectified distance. And that was beautiful, truly oh, wonderful. I'm glad it was such a good experience. Yeah, and I left the piece there with one of the residents to finish. I oh. was like, cause I, could, I didn't have the time to, you know, wait for it to fire and then finish the piece. So I was like, left it with her and I said, here, fire it, do whatever you want with it. Mm. So have you heard anything back about what happened? Uh, we were, th we, we were talking about it over the phone a few days yes. back. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we'll see what she does. Ah, that'll be interesting. Yeah. I hope you get a picture to yeah. share. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be I'll, good. I'll um, bother her about it. Yes. Okay, good. We could use that, uh, just, uh, another nice, um, physical reminder of these exchanges like the one between Heidi and Mr. Han, Absolutely. Heidi Lowen and Mr. Han, uh, who was here last summer and threw pots, which she, she then finished. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So. Well, be. if she, when, I'm going to say when she comes, um, we will, she'll make something for me to finish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and maybe yes. we can continue that way. That'll be great. Yeah. Oh, good. So, the visit, I know, included participating in the Ceramics Festival. Did you get to do some other things in Ichan, or was it mostly centered around the festival? It was mostly centered around the festival. Mm -hmm. um, we did lectures, uh, slideshows um, of our work, mm -hmm. got to see slideshows of other people's work. Mm -hmm. um, and not, not just, um, I would suppose, like artistic ceramics, but also um, like mechanical ceramics and stuff like that, yes. which was really interesting. Um, we um, ch checked out the festival, which I'm sure you'd have to have several days of time just purely dedicated to seeing all the wonderful booths mm -hmm. um, and meeting all the great people. Um, but we did also spend some time with uh, Mr. Han at his studio um, with his wife. And you know that he's coming this summer for the folk art market, I think. So we'll see more of him um, Absolutely. in July. I can't wait. Yes. He's one of my favorite people in the whole world. Oh, great. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Truly, truly wonderful person. He's an incredible potter, isn't he? Yeah. I have, um, I actually got um, pictures of him throwing and also a short, short film I made with my camera. Oh, and good. I keep watching it because of his 
how would I say, like the, because throwing is very much um, a relationship and a present relationship with clay and space and form mm -hmm. and weight and all kinds of cool stuff. And he, I would say that watching him was like watching poetry. You know, it was like, it was stunning. I know what you mean. When he was here in 2011, I took him out to the community college. Yeah. And I was taking a class, a Macacious Clay class at the time. And so I thought, oh, you know, these people would love to meet this artist from Korea. Yeah. Well, all I thought was, oh, well, I'll go in and introduce them, you know, and everybody will say, oh, here's what we do. And, uh -huh. But he immediately asked for clay. <laughs> yeah. And he started throwing my Keisha's clay on the wheel, which nobody usually does. Yeah, that's very because difficult. Because of the roughness of it. <laughs> yeah. And, um, oh, and what was really great was the way he wedged it. He, he just threw it onto the ceramic floor and, and you know, he got down on his knees, one knee, you know, and was wedging away on the uh -huh. ceramic, on the concrete floor. And um, after he did the throw, his throwing demonstration, then he did a hand building demonstration where he did coils that were about this big in diameter. Uh -huh. And um, he was just breaking down a, a big, you know, 25 pound lump of clay into these coils. And um, oh, and he made the base of what he was making with his foot. Huh. So um, he just kind of tapped it out with his foot, and then he started adding the coils, and oh, it was a great show. Nice, <laughs> cool. Well, I can't, I can't wait to see him when he comes. I sure yeah. hope I get to spend some time. Mm -hmm. with him. That'll be great. Yeah. So um, reflecting back on the the trip, do you see it influencing what you're working on now at all? I know well, it. I can't. I can't say it. It didn't change change yes. me for yes. sure. Um, I think mostly. Um, I'm I'm not so interested necessarily in the technical aspects or or sort of influence in my work, but more of the sort of psychological aspects mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like whenever we venture out into the world and experience new things and release our expectations of a moment or an experience that um, we gain more from it. And I think that my, my trip to Korea or South Korea and, and the ceramics festival and the wonderful people who showed us around and took care of us and fed us so much food, <laughs> the most wonderful food <laughs> um, that um, it's, it's like practice. It's like um, exercising um, openness. And that's again what I'm talking about. Like, like whether you see something within a tiny space or whether you see something with, with more space for it to allow it to be whatever it is. And um, what I was realizing was that um, the relationship that I built with people there um, and then how I let that affect me and change me was a practice and sort of courage, you know, and that, that like curiosity to learn something new and to be vulnerable enough to take that in and to let that change you, you know, um, was it's, it's scary. It can be very scary. And if, if I had approached this experience with, I'm Rose and I already know everything and I, are, and I, um, I have my preconceived notions on what I will experience and who I will meet and, and that's you and this is me and that's your stuff and my stuff. Um, rather than allowing myself to sort of dive into the pool of experience and let it sort of change me and my, on a cellular level rather than a sort of object-based experience. So. I, I feel like my new body of work that I'm working on is a lot about this, the space of allowing growth or of opening oneself up enough to sort of go with the flow in a sense. And um, because I went with the flow at times, I feel like I was moved to tears. And if, mm. if I hadn't allowed myself to listen and pay attention and watch on a higher level that it wouldn't have changed me the way that it did. Mm -hmm. And to the point that I like cried all the way home. Um, so I feel like that is the power 
of creativity and the power of, of creative expression and art, you know, is that like that suspending disbelief, you know, where you, uh, you, you put aside all, your, all of everything you expect and just let it come in, this, in whole new ways. And even I had been to Japan and yet my experience of the world was nothing that I would ever, ever imagine. So um, that's how it changed me, I feel, and that's how it changed my work. And it really, I came home and I was like, I have met the most amazing people, and I have something inside my soul has changed. Because Did it want to make you get into the studio with your hands on the clay? Yeah, it made me want to like sit in my studio and, and smile. Uh -huh. more than anything of just like this how can i make this fun again how can i make life like yes. the like the jump into whatever <laughs> and and enjoy it oh that sounds good <laughs> i'm glad so you'd recommend it to other people oh most definitely i feel like every time that you're taken out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and you allow yourself to be uncomfortable that that uh that we can grow it's true yeah. It is. It's sometimes hard to go somewhere and experience new things and eat strange foods and mm -hmm. be surrounded by people you don't know, but it does have an effect on you that's positive. Yeah. Yes. It's like the fear of like just l absolutely falling in love with something that uh -huh. is totally strange and weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Far away and you don't even know how to communicate in yeah. language. <laughs> Well, I'm so happy to talk to you and know that the UNESCO Creative Cities Network um, that we belong to is really making a difference for individuals who are getting this chance to go other places and meet other people. Absolutely. I'm really hoping that that's going to grow and that we'll have more and more of these kinds of exchanges happening and um, more people feeling like they've uh, learned something that's life and, and become changed in a way, like you say, that you were so um, absolutely so thank you for taking the time because I know it was not easy when you have a busy schedule and other priorities and so forth I'm um, glad you could make the time to go and uh, accept that invitation from Ichan yeah and uh, we're ever so grateful to Ichan of course I hope some people in Ichan will see this uh, interview and and understand what a great thing it was for you mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure some people in Santa Fe will see it and be interested in everything that you had to say because um, uh, you're so eloquent, Rose. <laughs> you are so thoughtful. And I can't wait to see this new body of work that has this thought going into it. Well, maybe um, Mr. Han, when he comes this summer, will be able to see some of the work that he inspired. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for taking the time to do the interview. Thank you. And good luck with all of your projects this summer. And uh, I look forward to getting back in touch with you as soon as Mr. Hahn gets here. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> thank you, Sabrina. You're welcome.